In armored fighting vehicle history, many tanks have achieved an almost mythical status. Tanks such as the Tiger, Leopard 2, T-90, etc. There's one tank that's fairly high on the list, the American M1 Abrams. Ever since the early 1980s, it's been the US's primary MBT. In terms of mythical status, I think the M1's on par with the Tiger, or even tied with it. Historically speaking, America hypes up their aircraft, not their tanks. But that more or less changed following the Gulf War. During Operation Desert Storm, the M1 performed extremely well. So of course people took it and ran with it, exaggerating facts and creating misinformation. I hope I can clear up some of those myths in this video. Of course, there are also a fair number of myths deriding the M1, which we will also talk about. Anyway, let's get started. It's often said that the M1 was never taken out in combat. You'd think the correction for this would be straightforward, but it's a bit more complex than you would think. After Desert Storm, the M1's performance was discussed in some congressional hearings. In those hearings, the army was very enthusiastic about the M1, saying that none were destroyed by enemy fire. This is where I think the myth comes from. However, the army wasn't technically wrong. M1s hadn't been destroyed by enemy fire, but several had been knocked out. That's a very important distinction. If a tank is knocked out, that means it was a mission kill. It's taken out of the immediate fight, but it can still be repaired and sent back out later. A vehicle being destroyed should be self-explanatory. It's a total write-off, and it has to be scrapped. So people should be saying no M1s have been destroyed, right? Not quite. During the Gulf War, at least 9 M1s were destroyed, but either through friendly fire or scuttling. Since then, more M1s have been totally written off, mostly due to IEDs. That's not counting M1s lost in foreign armies, either. The M1's combat record is already impressive. It doesn't need to be embellished. No tank is invincible. People rarely mention that during Desert Storm, there were no casualties among the M1's knocked out, which I think is even more impressive. With that out of the way, let's move on to the next point. The M1's mobility is fairly impressive, mostly owing to its gas turbine engine. However, people sometimes make some very odd claims about how fast the M1 is, or more accurately, theoretically could be. Like a lot of tanks, the M1 has an engine governor. This limits max speed, but for good reasons we'll talk about in a bit. US tankers have been known to disable the M1's governor for fun, seeing how fast they can make their tank go. This has led to some out there claims, with some saying they got their M1 past 60 miles per hour or more. For non-Americans, that's over 96 kilometers per hour. That comes close to light tank test beds like the HIMAG, which was pretty much designed to be as fast as possible. It's a bit hard to find concrete numbers for ungoverned speed, but as far as I can tell, the XM1 prototype didn't have a governor. It topped out at 47 miles per hour, only a bit faster than the production M1. I can't find any more recent figures, but if they could exceed 45 miles per hour, I would be shocked. Now you're probably wondering, why limit a tank speed in the first place? There are a few reasons, namely component wear and crew well-being. The faster you're going when you hit a bumper crater, the more suspension damage you'll have. The crew won't appreciate it much either. Tanks don't have seatbelts. There are also some claims that during wartime, the governors are turned off for extra performance. I can see this being somewhat useful, but only in niche circumstances. By and large, I think it would do more harm than good. Now the negative miss. The majority of the M1's ammo is stored in the turret, and is protected by blowout panels. If the ammunition doors close and the ammo is hit, the crew will be okay in most circumstances. However, the M1 also has ammo in the hull. Some people think that if you hit the ammo in the hull, it'll destroy the tank. Simply put, this isn't true. The hull ammo also has a blowout panel. That much can be seen here. Regardless, the ammo compartment is apparently left empty these days. And finally, a myth I've seen float around for a while now. When the M1 was being developed, two companies made competing prototypes. There was the XM1 made by General Motors, powered by a diesel engine, and the XM1 made by Chrysler, powered by a gas turbine. Some people think that GM won, but right as the army was about to announce it, Chrysler was suddenly picked instead. The story goes that Chrysler was in some trouble, so to save themselves, they convinced or bribed the army to buy their model. This is simply not true in the slightest. The Chrysler model won because it was better. Not only was it cheaper than GM's proposal, but the turbine was the better engine. There's this assumption that diesel engines are automatically better, which is not true. The diesel engine was underdeveloped, unreliable, had lower performance, and telegraphed the tank's position. The turbine engine wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better than the diesel. Not to mention that for both prototypes, they could use the opposing engine. The engines weren't locked to each vehicle. If they wanted a Chrysler XM1 with a diesel, they could have had it. And it would have been cheaper too. If that doesn't say how much better the turbine was, I don't know what will. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. If you have tank myths you want me to cover, leave it in a comment. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.